Welcome to the Leadonomic Show, and today we have with us Robert Lewitt. Robert, from welcome to the show. Thank you, Rachel. Glad to be here. You know, tell us a little bit about how you got into this space. I mean, give us a bit of your background and uh, you know where you grew up and how you ended up in being an investment person. Well, I grew up in in the New Mexico, which is the southern border of uh, Mexico and U.S. Okay, New Mexico. And huh? so I grew up in the mountains in okay. a small region where it was primarily Hispanic community. Yeah. And uh, I was, uh, yeah, I was a minority in in that area. I was. Uh, so you stood of, out there. I stood out. One of the kids that got picked on, okay. and um, you know, my family used to take us to Mexico. And one day I saw a sign that's. You know, it looked like a stop sign, but it said Alto, okay. and uh, you know Spanish for stop. And at that point, I knew that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be involved in the international, and uh, uh, that's what I ended up really uh, loving. So, you, so how did you get into the whole investment space? Well, it was uh, you know getting out of New Mexico actually was very difficult because, yep. like many places, it's difficult to make a jump from where you are in life. And I, I actually attached myself to a politician who was okay. a, a very big underdog at okay. the time, extreme underdog, okay. and somehow he won. And he ended up giving me a job in Washington. Okay. And uh, at least he got me started. And then from there I got involved in international banking and then uh, international finance. And I got a degree and an MBA and I kept going. Um, all the way uh, till I ended up in Malaysia. Okay, and, and tell us a little bit from, from Washington to Malaysia, right? Well, I left the United States. I moved uh, about five years ago from the United States to, to France. Okay. I didn't speak the language at the okay. time. I didn't know anybody. Uh, we had decided we were going to open an office in France and okay. deal with some things. In, well, why in, France? Uh, um, because I wanted to learn French. Okay. Uh, I grew up, I learned how to speak Spanish. I had gone to school in Mexico and um, I wanted to do something different. And uh, you know the the French, it seemed to me, was not that far of a change from from being in the U.S. Mm. And and at the time, you know, most of us, you know, we want to change the world, but I wanted to change myself. Mm. And to do that, you had to put yourself in a different environment from one that you know. Mm. It's the only way you really break out of and what girl, you're doing. Yeah. And so I went to France, and you know, it was interesting. One day I was I was walking with a friend of mine, and um, I decided to buy a car. Okay. And I wanted to buy a Mini Cooper in France okay. because, you know, we, we drive small cars in France. And I went to the, the largest city around us, which was Nice, and I went to the, the Mini Cooper dealership. Yep. And I brought my checkbook and I wanted to buy a car. Okay. And I said, I want to buy a Mini Cooper. I'm expecting them to have a few. I can test drive, right. pay, and go. And they told me right off, come back in four or five days and we'll have one for you to test drive. And uh, I was completely frustrated. How can you, and they didn't take my name or anything. Right. I was shocked. How can you sell, you know, and I was, I was ranting and raving with this, with this girlfriend of right. mine. And she, she looked at me and she goes, you know, it's a beautiful day. You're on the Cote de Jure. You're with a beautiful girl. And if you're <laughs> going to be like this all day long, I'm not going to be with you. And it was like, wow. You know, there are things that are more important than mm. me, mm. you know, and being mm. serviced. At, right. And that's what Americans get used to, you know, yep. at 24 hour this, that, anything you want, you, right. you can have access to it. The rest of the world doesn't work yeah, like that. Oh, yeah. Some places do, but yeah. a lot of places don't. Yeah. France is one that doesn't. <laughs> you know, when they take lunch for two hours, they, <laughs> they go, nobody answers the phone. Right. And, you know, and then you learn to appreciate it's the people that are far more important mm. than the, you know, making money or the business or those kinds of things. So there are so many life lessons mm. that I learned by living in a, in, in initially in France and, right. and developing those those skills of learning a language and coping with people in mm -hmm. their way of thinking, not in you know in them speaking way. in my language. So it was to me they could relate to me. I wanted to be able to, to relate to them mm -hmm. in their world. And, and you take that same philosophy into your investing in, in terms of your investment of decisions, right? I mean, yes. you seem to value people a lot more than other criteria, right? If you don't understand the people, it's mm. very hard for me. I mean, mm. there's lots of ways to do investing. But for me, I need to go in and I need to learn the culture. Mm. I need to read novels mm. from that country mm. so I can appreciate the people. And then I, have, I can have a conversation. Yep. Because if I'm meeting people from another country and I don't understand their background, right. how they grew up, their values, you know, and that's really the, one of the key things is values. Mm. Because we learn, we all learn similar values, that's but right. we learn it in different ways. And if you can understand how other people learn the values, then you can open them up and you begin to learn what, what makes them tick. Mm. If you stay as a Western investor and you come in and you fly into an airport, yep. you know, and you get you go through the duty-free right. shop that's in the same in every city and right. you get in the, the limousine with the air conditioning and you go, go to, to the, the, the Four Seasons Hotel <laughs> where the rooms look like everywhere else right. and then you have all your meetings in those hotel. Yep. Then you reverse on the way out and you say, wow, I saw Indonesia. Yep. Well, you know, when? Out the window <laughs> in, in, the, in the way from yeah. the airport. Yep. And so to be able to really appreciate what's going on, mm. you have to be able to interact 
interact with people. And mm. the only way you can really break people down is if you understand a little about who they are, yeah. where their values came from, yeah. where their culture comes from. Yeah. And that, you know, one way is through through novels. I love to read the novels. Yeah. Another way is to learn the language. Yeah. And and as you can speak if you, you know, not everyone appreciates you speaking yeah. their language. Some places in Northern Europe, yep. they'll just reply to you in English, yep. etc. But a lots of countries, you know, they're afraid of you because you're you're a Westerner, you're yep. foreign, you're different, you're and and then you 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 know you say you know you know sell not pagi in the morning and the big smile, you know, right, it's like right, oh right. okay he you know and the more of course that you understand about what they do, mm -hmm. the more then you can begin to understand what happens and why it happens. Mm -hmm. And so for looking at investments, for example, yep. you know, urbanization was a big topic. All the investors focus on. Right. I go to Jakarta, I ask all the analysts, you know, how do you, why are these people moving here? What's yeah. the story? Yes. And they tell me, well, um, because of this, that, and, the, and I say, well, have you ever gone out and asked them? Mm. Oh, no. You know, the closest we've ever come to public transportation, one analyst told me, was a taxi. Yep. You know, and so I ended up getting on an OJAC and heading into okay. areas of, of, of Jakarta that yep. where they pick up, you know, plastic bags and things like that. And I bring like a secret weapon with me, which is my Polaroid camera. Okay. And I don't take pictures, I, I give, them, give them, you know, up, and yep. you make friends and then you know, they tell me, look, we're here, but our big problem is, is there's no transportation. And as soon as we get some money, we take half of our money and buy a motorcycle. Hmm. So to me, it's like, ding 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 you know mm -hmm. here's the investment opportunity right. is something going on in public transportation or if not I should buy the company that sells the motorcycles mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. by understanding a lot more you begin to get a development for what's going to happen tomorrow okay. and next year not you know what's your right. capex from a company for the next three quarter three months I don't care mm -hmm. I want to know what the big picture is I want to find you know the the, the pie right. or as we say in France the cheese that's getting bigger, bigger yeah. and so I can get the easy hanging fruit mm -hmm. and that's the way we look at the investment mm -hmm. world it's interesting because you seem to have an ability to kind of detect trends and so on. Is this how you do that yes. by immersing yourself in? Yeah, people? you have to, and be you know, it's not by reading analyst reports or or watching TV because those are the trends that have already occurred. Mm. It's too late. We want to know what's happening before they happen. So this a few months ago, I was in Egypt. Mm -hmm. I was down in uh, Rwanda, yep. which is amazing what they're doing in Rwanda. I mean, all of our images of Rwanda is a genocide, but what you should see is the genocide museum and the way they've come together. Right. Cote d'Ivoire, places like that right. that are that are yeah. changing. You know, and and there are new countries. There are new changes and and it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be looking at an African company in mm. Cote d'Ivoire mm. because what what I learned there is that a lot of Malaysian companies are going, going to after, Africa because yeah. they don't have enough room to to expand so you know there's connections because yeah. analysts will focus on Southeast Asia and other analysts will focus, focus on, on yeah. Africa right. but our focus is the whole on thing. the connection mm. between the two where do they get fertilizer maybe it comes from Russia maybe it comes from Norway maybe it comes from someplace in Africa where mm. they're trying to develop and by seeing the, 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 the global aspects of it, that's what I think gives us a, a real edge in our investing. Mm. How, you know, in terms of leadership, right, what would you define as leadership and, and how do you assess leadership in companies? Well, everything is different. I, I can tell you our firm, I rarely spend any time at it mm -hmm. because we're in a world where you can work with the computer yep. and the internet and we have a guy, uh, he's now a month, he's, he's in China mm -hmm. and he had some issues with his family and he's gonna work from there. It's mm -hmm. so easy today not to be isolated into a uh, you know into, into an office and yeah. if people understand but you have to set the rules a yep. little bit differently yep. there's a, a requirement for for output not mm -hmm. for hours mm -hmm. and I think some of those changes have been effective okay. uh, for our firm okay and speaking of trends right what are some of the trends that you have noticed in your in your especially out here in Southeast Asia or this part of the world well you know <laughs> Malaysia is such an interesting place and it's very difficult for us to think about investing today in Malaysia because we have an election, yep. and um, you know if this one gets less than forty or more than fifty or more than two thirds or all that, you know the different pieces come right, in, and, right. and, and and even when the election is is is, is another debatable it, yeah. is another yep. you know, issue. Yep. So um, the trend here is let's wait and see okay. and and let's let's watch. Okay. But there's some you know some more interesting things that go on in in Malaysia, for example. You have industries like the, the glove industry, mm. and if you take gloves, you know they're made of either rubber or uh, natural rubber or synthetic yep. rubber. Mm -hmm. And you know, synthetic rubber is based on petroleum. Yep. So um, you have some you know, interesting things there. You also have questions in Indonesia, which is one of our favorite markets to mm -hmm. invest in, mm -hmm. where Indonesia's, they've been having uh, concerns about inflation. 
But if the West slows down, Indonesia's inflation slows down, which allows them to do a lot more. Yeah. So there's you know a lot of minor issues constantly changing, yep. but there's some big issues. I mean, look, if you look around the world, something like, I read recently, something like less than 10% of the people mm -hmm. have both food in the refrigerator and money in the wallet. And okay. if you less look, than 10%. less than 10%, wow. okay. even less of those people have shares. Yep. And so, you know, we all think, I mean, I talked to some of my head fund friends mm -hmm. and they say, hey, is the world falling? Is the sky falling? Yep. It doesn't make any difference to the majority of people yep. what happens in the stock market. Yep. They want to buy a refrigerator to put food in. Right. They want to buy a wallet and they're willing to work to get things. Yep. And so that's a big change. Yep. You're seeing lots of people, in, in particularly in the emerging world, the developing world, who have an opportunity now mm. for the first time that if they're hard, if they work hard, they'll have an opportunity to have something in their right. life, right. have money, they're spending, and that's a trend that's going to continue mm. for a long time. Okay. You know, let me ask you a little bit about social entrepreneurship, because there seems to be a mushrooming of social enterprises, us being one here. What is your take on social enterprises and, uh, you know, and the future of social enterprises? Uh, in, well, in the next couple of years? Uh, it, it depends on, you know, if there are people out there that want to to, to give. I mean, it's um, mm. it depends on who you are and what you want to do. Yep. I try not to look at the, the broad yep. aspects. I just look at what I do. Okay. And I think I was really affected by a number of things in my life. But mm. one of them was a, a, a television show in the U.S. about some paramedics okay. that I think in 2004, 2005 went to Pakistan. Okay. And they were helping people. They had nothing. They were, yep. you know, they're not doctors. Yep. They're, they're not even nurses. They're just the, the guys yeah. that drive the ambulances. Yeah. And they, they were helping people in Pakistan. And I remember the line. It was so clear. He said, said to me, or he said on the television, he said, we've done more for American-Pakistan relations than all the governments mm. in the world can mm. do. Mm. And I think that, that was really you know, impactful mm. to me, that you have a one-on-one -on -one relationship right. with people. And so for me to be involved with other people that don't have privilege, but yeah. if they had that same opportunity yeah. I had, they would do really well in their lives. Mm. It, it's, a, it's so satisfying, yeah. you know, and, and I was at a point one of the reasons I left the U.S. is because I had achieved a, a level of success where yep. I had I had enough money to support myself for the rest of my life to, mm. to do what I wanted to yep. do. And I was surrounded by people that were focused only on getting richer. Mm. It was having a bigger house or a bigger car. I mean, right. there was, it's like, if you think about success and that's your driving point, which it is for so many people, mm. then they get there. What drives you next? Mm. And for me, it's no longer being among the people that have success. Yep. I want to be around the people who, who don't have success, but if they had the same privilege as I did, could have success. And then I want to help them mm -hmm. achieve something in their life, to, to change, right. help them change their life, not to, to, to buy them crutches. I mean, there are people that do yep. a lot of good work and yep. things like that, yep. but, but you know, here I found a community that, that is an Afghan community that's a refugee community, and I, I, and I got involved with it a few years ago mm. because I had heard, a, I had gone to the, the, um, the conference here on criminalizing war. Yep. Yep which really also changed my life because I met some people from the Iraqi community that looked at me and accused me as an American of supporting all these bad things. Mm. And they had no idea that I didn't know any of it was going on and yep. most Americans have no yep. idea that these things are going yep. on. And so then I became a little bit more sensitive and then right after that I heard a speech by a one of the presidential mm -hmm. candidates, vice presidential candidates, Sarah Palin, and she was talking about going to Afghanistan, we have to be there to, 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 f to protect ourselves against Al Qaeda. And to me, I thought, well, what about all the Afghans, all these people yeah. that are being, sure. you know, harmed by what you're doing yeah. for your own purposes? Yeah. And so I said, I want to get involved in the Afghan community. And I ended up getting involved with the school here in Malaysia. And, we, you know, the, the school is focused on, on educating these kids the best they can. I mean, the people that are, that are working are, 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 they're not Afghan, they're right. not even Muslim, they're Christians. And they have no money themselves. I mean, they're barely surviving themselves. And yet they, they spend, you know, their time and helping other people and I got involved and um, I found a community that's about as far away from you know where I was which yeah. was you know South Florida in Palm Beach County Boca Raton Florida to people that are you know that are that don't know where they're going to be tomorrow I mean right. they're hoping they get relocated they have no idea where their lives are and they have kids that, that don't go to school anymore. Mm -hmm. And these are bright kids, yeah. you know, and so we, we start, we focus on getting them, you know, some, some, some English education, and then we, some of them we send to some additional math training. And this year we got four of them accepted into the Shree Gardens International School. Okay. And they've been there a few months now, and they're, they're excelling. And, and one of the teachers, I was there this week, and one of the teachers told me, she goes, she didn't even realize that the girls had not been in international school for the last five years. Mm -hmm. You know, give somebody a chance. Yeah and they can change exactly. their life. Right. And, 
and just because of their circumstances of their fate, where they were born, mm -hmm. and what happened, partly by my country, which supported mm -hmm. their own interests, right. but affected these, these, these people, you know, yeah. these people, and it yep. wasn't fair. So, you know, I try to to do what I can wow. to change and make some differences in these well, people's fantastic. lives. We hope there are more leaders out there that give as much as they take, right? Um, if there's a young person who wants to emulate you, uh, you know, and get into your space and do what you're doing, what advice would you give that person? It's, you know, it's very challenging because you have to be a little bit crazy to, 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 to you know, I, I ended up spending a, a small stint in, in a prison in Africa this year. They okay. accused me of being a mercenary. And so okay. I don't think many people really aspire <laughs> okay, that we must talk to, about. <laughs> to do those kinds of things, you know. But if you really want to get out in the world, you have to be willing to break out of everything you know, mm. all of your, your, sure, your all comfort zone, all of your security, mm. and really love learning about other people. Yeah. That's, to me, is, is what I do. That's yeah. why I don't work. You know, I can't wait to get up in the morning to see what's happening. Right. And, uh, you know, there is no such thing as a weekend because it's, it's just, this is, what I, this is who I am yeah, and this yeah. is what I do. Yeah. So tell us about that, that episode in Africa. <sighs> well, what happened there? Um, you know, we were, we were traveling and um, they didn't expect people that look like me <laughs> to be hitchhiking down, you know, okay. roads. And, uh, of course, to me, uh, if I were to rent a car and have a driver take me from one place to another, I would have missed all the people. Right. I wanted to take the buses. Right. I wanted to do those kinds of things. Okay. And um, anyway, they they just didn't know what we were there, and they, they just couldn't believe that somebody would come mm. to you know Central African Republic, that mm. uh, which is where we were, and and not be looking for for mischief. I mm. mean, um, okay. <laughs> so so you survived. They, uh, here. <laughs> it was yeah, it was fascinating. Are you kidding? I mean, the people I met in in a, in that part of the world, right. in in a prison, you know, and and they were so friendly, and so were the, all the gendarmerie, the guards, and. I learned so much from that experience. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, you learn how to how to feed yourself because they don't feed you in the okay. prison. Yes, you learn how to get you know beer or anything else you want. <laughs> but you, you learn that there's so many people in this world. You know, they, there was an expression that they always use it, to me. It, you know, in French, it was like "comme ça." This is mm -hmm. the way it is. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the way it is for most people. Right. And coming from a from a, a, a the USA where. You really can do anything you want. Mm -hmm. Opportunity is open. It's one of the few places in, in the world where anyone from any walk of life can do well. Yep. And then seeing it, you know, so close in your face, all these people, mm -hmm. no matter what they did, it could all be taken away from them yep. just by somebody yep. who wanted to. And, um, and, you know, and you learn to appreciate right, the privilege. And actually, it's one of the parts that I don't like. Mm -hmm. I don't like going back to the US because I see the privilege and I see the lack of appreciation mm -hmm. for what for people that. have. And you know, just being born white with English as your native language is such a huge advantage. Mm. And yet, all the other things—the schooling, the you know, yep. all those things that other people in the world—they don't get an opportunity right. to have, no matter how bright they are. That's what mm. I think really makes your you know your life. I read this book once called it was my favorite book. It's mm. called Shantaram by Greg Roberts about a guy who had a lot of problems in his life in, in Australia. And you know, and no matter how difficult mm. life is. It, life, it's an experience, yes, you know? It it's is. not about getting someplace. I, right. I was recently at a, at, a, at a funeral, you know, and I spent several hours with, with the body, and, yep. and she was so peaceful. Mm. You know, when you want, you know, when you die, you're gonna have that peace, yep. and all no, of will, no yeah. problem. But yep. it's the trial, and the tribulation, and the yeah. trauma, and the difficult, that's right. life. Right. So, you know, embrace it. Don't, don't be upset about it. Okay. Final question. If you could give some advice to our viewers, you know, any piece of advice or nuggets of wisdom, what would they be? It's that you know, life is a, life is an experience, and um, and don't worry what happens. Don't think about the future. You know, every day, wake up and read the next page of your life. Don't mm. try to project the next chapter or how the book ends. Mm. And so no matter what's going on, you wake up in the morning and read the next page. We have Robert Lewitt here on The Leader Show. Robert, thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you.